So it's not only just us here, it's huge. And uh, the universe is really the th source of our thoughts. Uh, we just think that we have private thoughts, but it's coming at the galactic level and at the universal level. So one message for that is relax and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> now, let, let's see if I, oh good. Um, the, we'll be covering Solar Cycle 24, which is a perfect storm, the galactic alignment, exopolitics, and the time acceleration matrix. Time is actually accelerating as we speak, as we sit here. And uh, uh, because time is not a, a constant. Um, and exopolitics is the new political science of outer space. It's a science of relations between our human civilization and other civilizations in the multiverse. We'll be talking about positive outcomes of Solar Cycle 24 and strategies and solutions. So, well, welcome to Solar Cycle 24, uh, 2009 to 2020. Um, there are many predictions of what the amplitude of Solar Cycle 24 will be, as you can see from, from this uh, graph by, by NASA. And uh, some, some think that it's going to be very low amplitude, and some think that it's going to be very high amplitude. So we're in a position of maximal uncertainty now. And although some information about so Solar Cycle 25 is coming in, uh, uh, most of the predictions are only within this cycle, that is from 2009 to 2020. And so I like focusing, amongst many other reasons, on Solar Cycle 24, 2009 to 2020, because it gets us out of the 2012 mean. And it says, hey, <laughs> it's a cycle. Okay. Oops, I guess that's going forward. Right now we're in a deep solar minimum and there's about a 50 year low in solar wind pressure. What this means is that there will be fewer geomagnetic storms uh, that theoretically can affect um, all of the computer equipment and satellites and other things that we have here on Earth. Uh, this, we're also, we continue to be in a deep solar minimum and the sun's brightness is uh, dropping. Um, and uh, we're in the deepest solar minimum in nearly a century. Uh, sunspot magnetism, which you can see plotted there on the graph, is on the decline. Um, and it may be that sunspots will be increasing because we're in such, such, in such uncertainty. You, you can remember seeing from the graph at the beginning uh, that uh, sunspot cycles may be picking up by the, by the end of 2009 to be followed by a solar maximum of below average intensity in 2012 or 2013. However, there's another view of this, and that is that if the sun continues to become qu more quiet, uh, we'll be going into a territory um, of historic minimum, and a quiet sun will cause temperatures globally to take a nosedive. This is contrary to the global warming <laughs> argument. So this, we're in a period of maximum uncertainty. If this version is coming forward, which there's some basis for it, uh, um, temperatures are actually falling around the globe, not getting warmer. And um, we know already that from 1998, the lower troposphere temperature glo temperatures globally have fallen around a half a degree Celsius due to the quiet sun. So it's necessary to go deeper than the global warming headlines to really understand the 
dynamics. However, if we do have a Dalton minimum or a Maunder minimum, which are re referred to historically uh, low sun minima, minima uh, the main effect will be to have famine and starvation worldwide uh, due to shortened growing seasons and harsher weather. Um, and so we may be headed into what's called a mini ice age. And we don't know. And we're in 2009. So that's the degree of uncertainty. It's the principle, the more you know, the more you don't know. Um, so some of the evidence is that uh, solar cycle 25, which uh, will be peaking around 2022, it starts in 2020, could be one of the weakest in uh, solar cycles in, in recent, in centuries, and that's connected to a possible mini ice age. Um, and that's because the conveyor belt system on the suns is beginning to weaken. Now, in the midst of all this, uh, we have a National Academy of Sciences report from January of 2009, uh, which says that 2012 to 13, the solar maximum may actually bring the perfect storm. In other words, solar flares and systems collapse of our current infrastructure around the planet, our energy infrastructure. The National Academy of Sciences report looks at the possibility if we do have a repetition of the eight, eight day 1859 Carrington event, a very large solar flare that essentially destroyed the telegraphic system worldwide, which was the electromagnetic, the electrical system at that time. Um, in the US, the damage could be as high as $2 trillion with millions dead. This is from the report itself. And it's questionable whether the US would ever bounce back. Now this, we're talking about 2012 to 2013. Uh, moreover, uh, NASA has now d discovered that there's a hole in the Earth's magnetic field which is 10, 10 times as large as was previously thought. Uh, the magnetosphere is what protects the Earth from the impact of uh, solar flares. And um, it could be that uh, plasma from solar flares would uh, up to 20 times the amount of solar plasma could enter the Earth than before. So we have a force multiplier of a solar flare with the, with the hole in the magnetosphere here, looking at the, quote, worst case scenario. Uh, we're looking at a solar maximum, which will be around May of 2013. And uh, according to some one scientist um, says, quote, it's the perfect sequence for a very big event if uh, a solar flare should load the magnetosphere with plasma just before a solar storm occurs. We have to remember that we're in a deep solar minimum, which tends to uh, lessen solar storms. So there are all these variables that are occurring at once. This is a map from the National Academy of Sciences study which shows uh, total collapse. The, the, the orange areas on both coasts show, show the total collapse of the electrical grid. Um, and the red are vulnerable transformers. And this is where the estimate of millions dead uh, has come from. Um, knocking out about 300 key transformers, uh, cutting power to 130 million people. And the uh, coronal mass ejection from the 1859 
Carrington event 